member here at Awesome and I run the Center Meetups. We do a meetup monthly, um, roughly monthly, uh, that just people show up with sense. Sometimes we have people perform, uh, sometimes we get together and jam. There was probably an hour and a half jam here earlier of, uh, of three of us there all sharing <laughs> the same clock signal and doing stuff. That's pretty sweet. Um, it just depends, you know, sometimes the, when the weather's good, the room's full and we'll have people do, you know, 10 or 15 minute performances if they want to. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah we, we've had a couple of times where there was like no room for anyone right. else. Right, really? Yeah. So how, how long you guys, how long has the, the group been going? It'll be, I think our first one, will, it'll be one year old next month. I think February was the first one or March. Last year. Oh, and nice. I'm later than that because they've always been downstairs and we weren't into this space until March last year. Oh, okay. It may have been, I, I think the, the the show that kicked it off was in February, now that I think about it. Because we, I, I went to a, a noise show here in town and I, I haven't known there were any, was anybody else around that were in the sense. And it was a Sunday night in February and there were like 40 people there with your own accents. So we started meeting. Monthly afterwards, uh, have had a really good turnout. We get people that come down from Boston. I know we're against the Boston meetup today as well. So, you know, half our Boston crew is at that, and the other half is at home with the flu. There are some people here who are professional musicians. We've got uh, several people who come who are professors at uh, Berkeley or various other colleges around in the music departments. Um, you know, it's it's hard to be a strictly professional noise musician and, unless you have seven roommates and live off the ramen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Or, yes, yeah, so you pretty much have to have another job so you can pay for it you know, right. for all the weeks because it's hard to make money doing it. Uh, so, most of it's people who do it for the, the love of the music and the love of the. I mean, there, there's a, a certain amount of, of gear fetishism going on as well um, <laughs> that you will see here. Uh, yes, depending on who shows the lust. I mean, playing with synths, you know, decades. Uh, I got to do your rack probably five or six years ago. And yeah, love it. You customize the system, you know, exactly like you want it. What's um, not the type? It is completely non-commercial. Uh, in terms of actually finding somebody that wants to pay you any money to do it in public. Uh, so, you know, synth meetups are a great way for, for folks to get together and, and actually you know, check, check gear out, uh, jam with each other. Um, and uh, here at Awesome, we've always been very encouraging of communities. Um, we, we'd like to, you know, a member has to sponsor the community. But we've got a robotics club that meets here. Um, I do the synth meetup. Uh, Mandy has done some needle felting meetups. Uh, you know, anybody who's really interested in using the space, uh, contact us. And if there's a member who's interested, you know, we'd love to have people here because this is this to us is what the the hacker spaces are about: is community and uh, getting a community together of people who who like to like to do stuff, whether that's making music or making electronics or printing or whatever. Uh, I don't think there's any one profile of it. I mean, you know, there are people that are sitting, especially when you get to music, you know, there are people who are doing amazing things on nothing but an iPhone that, you know, will just blow your mind when you sit and listen to it. Um, anybody who wants to be creative in any way, I think so. Um, and there's, it, it's something that has been driven out of public schools mostly because of high stakes testing. Um, that you know, arts get cut, music gets cut. Um, so encouraging young people to to discover that no, they can do stuff. You know, they don't have to be passive consumers of things, whether that be music or electronics um, or you know anything else. Uh, I think maker spaces can can help do, help do that and help bridge that that gap that's missing in schools now. You can learn brain surgery on the internet if you watch enough YouTube videos. Um, but no, there there are so many resources out there uh, for 
for people to learn about synthesizers. Um, Div Kid Ben runs an amazing YouTube channel that uh, that you know breaks sense down. <coughs> There's a ten-year-old girl named Caitlin who has a synth channel that you know explains all sorts of synthesis techniques and uh, and gear. Uh, but you know, there's free music software out there they can use to learn the song. Um, there's a, a Eurorack simulation program called, I think, BCD, that many of the manufacturers have made software versions or emulations of their products so people can test out patches and stuff without having to own, you know, all of the actual hardware. Because this can get expensive. Um, so yeah, there, get online, Google. There's there's all sorts of places you can learn about synthesis.